Hello YouTube, Welsh Gamer here, and the Welsh Gamer is speaking. Um, well, before I get into this video, I think we can all agree that the Xbox One's 2013 launch was controversial to say the least. It had some people worried, it had some people doubtful, it had some people excited, I suppose, you know. It, it, it really did cause a stir. There was a lot of things that went on, and uh, I think Xbox as a brand has felt felt the the riptide of said E3, you know, it, it, they, Xbox to this very day still gets a lot of uh, negativity and it all stems from that E3, because when you think about it, the 360 was a very, very respected console, like through Xbox, you know, people were looking forward to the new Xbox coming out and then the E3 at 2013 just, oh, just left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths and that much I can admit as an Xbox fan. But here we have a developer, the Aero developer, who uh, he basically defends Xbox, the whole brand, everything. He defends it from 2013, and he pretty much defends, you know, he pretty much just says that, you know, defending it right up until today, to this point now, um, and how it's uh, felt the felt the wrath after E3 2013. But just to get into it. Um, Microsoft was in a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation post E3 2013, says Aero Developer. To Microsoft's credit though, despite it completely disrupting their launch, they did listen to the feedback and went out of their way to address it. Right, for any of you that are new to my channel, those of you who aren't new to my channel, you know how I do this, I'll be reading through the article and I'll be giving my opinions as I go. So, let's get into it, shall we? A few days ago, Paul Morris of Mad Fellow Games, the developer of Aero, famously said that he was tired of every, every announcement regarding the Xbox One being met with backlash by the end, <coughs> sorry, by the gaming community. His point did make sense, and I'd say this is, a, this is someone who is largely dissatisfied with Microsoft showing in, the, in this generation on the games front. Right, just to quickly throw my opinion in, the Aero developer basically said that he's tired of every announcement regarding Xbox being met with backlash. And then as, as, <laughs> as that quote's being put to one side, you've got a journalist giving some backlash of his own. It, it, you're never going to run away from it. You know, you've got on one hand an uh, Aero developer defending Xbox and this journalist saying, and this is coming from someone who's largely dissatisfied with Microsoft showing this generation. Oh, God. If I, if I had a nickel for every time I heard some clown say that, I'd be a freaking billionaire. Honestly. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> uh, speaking of the Aero Dev, though, it's nice to know that there is, you know, some people out there, you know, that are in this industry, that, you know, their job surrounds this industry and they're, they're defending Xbox and, you know, what they're doing. So uh, that's always a plus. That's always nice to see. Right, to continue. <laughs> Discourse in games can often be vehemently negative. And for Microsoft especially, that seems to be the case. <coughs> we asked him to explain why he thinks this is an exclusive interview with, uh, in an exclusive interview with Game Involved. And he said, is it, is, it oh no, is it because of Microsoft's Infinite E3 2013 showing? He goes on to say, in quote, people seem to go out of their way to find something to moan about when, and seem genuinely incensed if someone dares to actually think it's pretty cool and looking forward to it. For, someone that's, for something that's supposed to be fun, gaming seems to have more than its fair share of haters, Nora said. Uh, just to touch on that, I, I think he's bang on the money there, and this isn't even me coming across as like a, you know, a toxic Xbox, toxic fanboy. It's just bottom line, like media bias, uh, the fanboy community. Like I, I on more than one occasion have been in com conversing with somebody, expressed my excitement for something that's either coming out for the Xbox or I'm expressing my excitement for the Xbox One X, whatever. And people come down on me like a like a fucking ton of bricks, like as if I'm committing kin to blasphemy or something it's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty hilarious but this guy's saying it outright and it's very true continue in quote the launch and that particular e3 seemed pretty disastrous from an onlooker's point of view i think that leading up to the launch microsoft had some really cool ideas that were overshadowed by drm focusing on the tv aspect and the always online issues 
All these huge corporations are so used to looking ahead at the whole life cycle of a product, I think they misjudged that the average gamer was ready to be but wasn't was ready to be prevented from playing if the internet went down. I don't think it'd be a controver that's controversial to suggest that a new console needed to be online in 2017, but in 2013 it was pushing things a bit too far. Um, I do agree with that. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, I, I, it wouldn't have bothered me. I mean, end of the day, 2013, it might have been a few years back, but more or less everybody I know had an internet connection then, even years previous to that. Like, internet, you know, every, everyone had internet, so why was it... Uh, I don't understand why it was so such a harsh uh, thing to um, suggest that everyone be online, you know, for, for the added features like family sharing. You know, if you wanted to share your games with all your family members and stuff like that. There was a lot of, there were some cool features. I will say they did, uh, uh, you know, focus far too much on the TV aspect. I'll say that outright. I mean, I used the, I used to use the TV um, features a hell of a lot when my Xbox setup was in the living room with my girlfriend. But now that I've got my own gaming corner of the room, which I, you know, release, you know, my bloody anger, uh, <laughs> my daily frustrations, um, you know, I don't use the TV feature all that much. I use it just for gaming. But it's safe to say they did focus a bit too much on the TV aspect. Um, to continue in quote, the frustrating thing for me personally was that I'd come to accept that it needed to be online. And I was looking forward to the feature where you could share games with your friends and family. Then after the infamous, this is how you share a PS4 game skit, and an E3 arena chanting Sony, Sony. It seemed that Microsoft did the mother of all U-turns. Um, yeah, I, I, th this is uh, there's nothing. You, to be fair, I can't deny anything that you just said. Like this is how uh, you know this is how you share a PS4 game. That video that went on YouTube of Yoshida and that fat prick. Uh, you know, it's just oh, it's hilarious. Like it, it, you just people will defend Sony and say that they're not a you know a they're not like biased. They're not. They're not slimy. They're not undercut. They're not undercarded at all. They don't hit below the belt. But they're they're not as unprofessional as companies go, in my personal opinion. And uh, as he said, Microsoft did the mother of all U-turns. That is like very safe to say. All of the bloody feet. Pretty much all the features they announced at E3 2013, they had to take away. Uh, which is credit to them. I mean, the amount of work that must have gone into that system for them to swallow their pride and get rid of all those features that people weren't happy about you know that that you've got to give them credit for that but they did indeed do the mother of all u-turns to continue the journalist now uh, norris goes on to say that he assumes that the last minute change in plans is what led to the xbox one being so bare bones at launch as it was in quote he said i guess if they had to reconstruct how the whole console worked at the 11th hour That'd explain why it was a bit bare bones at launch in terms of features. It felt like I downgraded from an Xbox 360 at the time, he said. I completely agree on that front. I, I couldn't wait to get my hands on the Xbox One, and when I did, I'll be the first one to admit that despite uh, you know putting the Kinect features to one side, because I, I love the Kinect to begin with, I, I, had, I had no complaints with the Kinect, but that to one side, in terms of the dashboard, the navigation, it did feel like a huge step backwards. And you know, in Aero developers' uh, credit to what he's saying, he's basically saying in a nutshell that the main reason the Xbox One had to start from scratch, basically, and was so bare bones in terms of features and innovation compared to what it is now, now it's had, you know, had a good run in and hit the ground running, was because all the features that they had planned for the system, they had to tear away, like, in the last second. So. Obviously, they had to build it, reconstruct the dash from the ground up, the, the whole UI, the whole that, the whole bloody operating system. Basically, um, a lot of things were pulled back, and uh, you know, it's a shame, really, because uh, you know we didn't get the console we were hoping for day one. But you can understand why the backlash was so heavy on them, and it's still you know left a taste in people's mouth to this day. To continue. In quote, to Microsoft's credit though, despite it completely disrupting their launch, they did listen to the feedback and went out of their way to address it. It's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation at this point. 
Do you push ahead regardless and try to prove everyone wrong with the original plan, or do you do everything you can to deliver what people say they want? To just throw my quick opinion in the mix, I, I think they made the right decision by listening to people, and they have continued to listen to people with every update, the feedback website. They're constantly listening to the gamer, always, constantly. The, the console has continuously improved. It is not the same machine that you had at launch 2013. It is undoubtedly uncontested when it comes to consumer feedback. To continue, in answer to the original question, I don't think it's possible to please everyone, and us gamers much less so. I'd, I think it'd still happen if E3 2013 had gone without a hitch. Can you imagine if after the Sony Microsoft keynotes everyone just said, well, it's all looking amazing now, great work Xbox and PlayStation, let's go to the pub together and celebrate the win for video games. Would that be so bad? I was going to throw this in the mix. Unfortunately, with the uh, mentality and ideology of some of these fanatical fanboys from both Xbox side and PlayStation side, Unfortunately, I just don't see it. I don't see a world where that is possible, where everyone collaborates. Like Microbox of X said in the in the Dragon X podcast episode nine, this crossplay that Sony keep denying that that's probably that probably has potential to get Xbox gamers and PlayStation gamers in 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 a similar playing field, like like in terms of mentality. Like imagine if you're playing with gamers from the other platform on a regular basis. You're bound to make ties, make friends. You're bound to like not see them as this toxic being of some sort. So every two minutes, that that would be a good idea. But Sony, in their you know bloody own bloody arrogant ways, denying all of these things, it's just making the dream less and less possible. But uh, it would be a cool. It would be cool though if everyone got along. But hey ho. Um, to continue, as I've already said, I do agree with the, with that with their larger point. However, with that said, I do need to point out that the phenomenon is not restricted to Microsoft either. Everybody is raked over the coals at some point or another in the gaming industry. It is Microsoft who is suffering negative discourse at the moment, but has everyone forgotten how bad Nintendo had it during the Wii U era or Sony in the era of the PS3 days? To be fair, I do agree with this point. I don't think anyone has had it quite as bad as Microsoft this generation. I think... The Save Sony campaign that plagued the E3 2013 and, and everything surrounding that because at the end of the day, like you said, PS3 did take a batter in last gen and Sony being a very um, in, you know financially incompetent corporation were looking at potential bankruptcy, I can only imagine. So if, if the media and the general uh, gaming consensus didn't turn around and pull it out of the bag and decide, no, we got a big, big up Sony this generation despite everything they do <laughs> um they're going to uh you know be- uh, dig their own grave basically so with that said all this praise sony has been getting this generation even though in my opinion they've given you absolutely nothing but cgi qte walking simulators as games infinite supply of japanese trash indie titles that just look dreadful and a poor online service that crashes and burns every other week I just don't, and they're charging you extra for this now. <laughs> it just uh, it makes no sense to me how they're getting as much praise as they have. But Microsoft, in turn, on the other side of the coin, has been getting the hate, the hate, the hate. And I just don't think any, I don't think anyone's had it as bad as Microsoft as they ha- as Microsoft's had this generation. Um, so even though I agree with what that guy is saying, I don't at the same time. I, I agree with him partially. To end the article, he says, yes, Microsoft gets backlash, but they also have the most flawed strategy at the moment. Another cheap shot at the end. What is with this? Uh, what is with Gaming Vault? They love their cheap shots. Uh, as fans of gaming who get invested in and are passionate about the hobby, I don't think it is unnecessarily wrong to vocalize how you feel about that either. So he basically contradicted the whole article. You've got a developer defending the Xbox and the hate that it receives unnecessarily on a daily basis. And then to end the article, which would have would have, would have, you know, other than this being a pretty great article, he just had to throw in the mix that it, that the Xbox has a flawed strategy. Explain to me, a uh, uh, journalist, how is consistently, not just sometimes, consistently engaging, communicating, listening to the gamer, improving your user interface, improving your online services, continuously pushing the boundaries and when it comes to games and innovation, when it comes to, 
you know, um, uniting the gaming community with things like crossplay. Like, and let's not forget, the Xbox One X would not even be a thing if it wasn't for Xbox listening to not only the love and, and the, the compassion that goes behind Xbox, but the hate it received as well. PlayStation shouted power and everyone screamed power, made Xbox One seem like an inferior, dud brick of a, of a console, getting the hate left, right and centre. So what do they do? They made the Xbox One X, again, listening. So what the hell is flawed about that? Uh, you know, I, I, uh, I just think you, whoever's writing this article, had an opportunity to report on some pretty decent, um, you know, gaming gaming related news and instead you just shown yourself up as obviously a bias sony pony yoshida dick licking mo fucker anyway i gave all of my opinions throughout the video it's gone on a hell of a lot longer than i expected but i just get really passionate about this stuff and it was a good article i mean i'll give it i'll give credit to uh Pramath or whatever his bloody name is or whatever um, it, it was a good article. It was a good article, first and foremost. But, you know, he, he just couldn't help himself throughout the article. You can see clearly the, the bits that just didn't need to be in there. Um, I do agree that everyone deserves a voice, but keep your biased, pathetic pony opinions to yourself. But um, as for an aero, the Aero developer defending Xbox, I think it's great. I, I think, just to end the article, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, it, it's starting to come out now, I think, more and more especially towards the Xbox One X's release, I think it's coming out more and more, now more than ever, just how much Xbox does do for the gaming industry. They're doing no they've done nothing but improve since 2013, despite all the flack they've, they've had. They've done nothing but better themselves, make incredible IPs. They've supported the community, they engage. Even, even when you think about the executives and how much they engage with the community on Twitter, that alone, like you just don't see that on any other system. You don't see that with any other corporation. Sony is so trapped in their ways of let's make a quick buck, even if it means producing and, and selling off third-party handout trash. That they're just not for the gamer, despite how much they hold that that slogan. Xbox, on the other hand, has done nothing but listen since day one of this generation, and they do nothing but they get nothing but flack off foot off all media sites as this article you know most of it was positive but the guy couldn't help himself you saw it first but first hand in front of you anyway guys that's all i got for you thank you very much for watching that is the welsh gamer home of the dragon x podcast my buddies erock x the microbox of x and remember to hit that bell to stay tuned whenever i make a video take it easy that is the welsh gamer the welsh gamer has spoken <laughs>